Today I'm going to talk about designing a support material that allows students to preview content before the lessons in order to support comprehension. I used Google Slides to chunk information into smaller parts from grade two, week 22, science lessons. What are some animal habitats? The amazing life cycle of the monarch butterfly. The interesting butterfly. Ladybugs interact with butterflies and plants in our local habitat. And what wood chipmunks make good neighbors to butterflies. So on each slide, you will notice there is this purple circle with an audio symbol on it. I was able to insert audio clips onto each slide in order to allow for students to be able to access the information on each slide and also to clarify some instructions or directions if that's needed. How I got this audio clip was I went to the Google extensions menu, which is right here and on the Google toolbar. You click it and you go to manage extensions. Once the menu comes up, you go to search extensions and type in MOTE, M-O-T-E. The MOTE voice notes and feedback card comes up. At the bottom, there'll be two buttons. One is details, one is on mine says remove because I already installed it, but the, this button will say install. You click install and allow permissions for MOTE to be able to be seen and used in Google Chrome, which you'll see it up here purple circle that matches this one with that little drawn M. And also, I'm just going to delete this, you will see it right in Google Slides in other Google applications as well. So on the first slide, I included the unit question to remain focused on the big idea of the unit. So how I put the audio clip there was I just click mode. This the extension actually takes out a lot of steps of creating audio clips for your presentations and your documents. You click this button to start and you also click the same button when you finish. I like to wait about a second before I start speaking to make sure that all of my words are complete. So click. What must be done to make a natural butterfly habitat? Click to stop. Moat starts thinking, and then very simply, you can replay it, or you can delete it if you don't like it after you replay it. So if I click play, what must be done to make a natural butterfly habitat? That's fine. I'm going to insert it. And it shows up right on the slide. You can toggle these squares to make it bigger. I like to make it bigger. This way the kids can really see it. Um, and so can I realize that it's there. And you can move it around the slide as well. So I'm going to delete that one and show you that all you have to do is click and in present mode, I'm in edit mode so that I can manipulate. Um, when present mode, you just have to click the purple circle. But in edit mode, you would have to pick the click the play button. Unit one question, what must be done to make a natural butterfly habitat? And this is on every slide. So I continue with my introductory slides for the students and just to have all the information they need for the week's lessons. Students explore the cycle of insect life and insect habitat as their uh, learning target pretty much for the week. And the standards are the next generation science standards that I aligned it to. Here is a checklist that the students can interact with. So I suggest um, giving the students each their own copy. So if you're using Google Classroom, they will be able to, you will be able to choose that option of make a copy for each student. Um, you can also give students their own copies in another learning man any other learning management system like Seesaw and any other thing, any other management system you use. So the students can just click and drag on the checklist as they complete lessons for the week, if that helps them, or as they complete 
the lesson previews. Moving on. So there's a preview of vocabulary in present mode. I have each vocabulary card fly in as <clears throat> I am speaking about them using the audio clip. So I do it for vocabulary as well. Vocabulary. Eggman. Vocabulary. Egg mass. Caterpillar. Noun. A long, worm-like larva of a butterfly or moth. Larva. Noun, a young insect or animal like caterpillars or tadpoles that at birth or hatching is very different from its parents like butterflies and frogs. That's how it works in present mode. But if a student or a teacher, if you're in um, edit mode, it will just read it when you press play and you can see them. The animations work in present mode. They don't work in edit mode. So I did also include some multimedia to make it more fun. This is an animal needs song to activate that prior knowledge about what animals need to survive. And then here is the, the here are, I should say, the pieces from the lessons that I chose to chunk one piece from each lesson for the week. So the whole week is chunked into smaller parts for the student to be able to preview the lessons in order to prepare for um, comprehension and support comprehension. So here's day one. And again, they can click the audio clip to, re to read it. They can read it themselves. They can discuss, have a discussion about the pictures. <clears throat> but day two and day three have the same format. They're from Edpuzzle. So each, there's I believe each day there is an Ed Puzzle activity in the lesson slides. And the Ed Puzzle activity um, is, if you're familiar with Ed Puzzle, it's a video that is paused with questions embedded in the video. So the video doesn't move on until the student answers the question to monitor their comprehension as they go along. <clears throat> Day four is there's a link here to Gail Gibbons' late book, Ladybugs. Um, the day four is all about that book and all about ladybugs. So they will get a preview of Gail Gibbons' book and, be, and there's a read aloud video from YouTube here, also stated. So day five, my little audio clip is at the bottom. I am having trouble moving that one for some reason. So it's there. Day five is just an image of the chipmunk and my audio clip describes how when they click this, they will be brought to National Geographic Kids for a one page quick facts about chipmunks. So I do read this and I um, inform them of that. So lastly, it I thought it would be fun to include a Kahoot. Um, if you're not familiar with Kahoot, it's an online quiz game that students usually play interactively together. So that is an option if they're in a small group, but if a student's working on this on their own to be comfortable with the material that they're gonna be presented with in science class, they can um, use Kahoot to do that. Now, I did not include an audio clip here because I wanted to finish with showing you again how to add the audio clips. So I, here I go to Moat. Move it over so I can read. I want to read the caption for this one. Click to start. Click here to start the game. Click the purple button to start a new game of Kahoot and assess what you learned about how monarch butterflies live and grow. Thinking, ready to insert, click insert. Abracadabra, hold tight while we automatically insert your moat. There it is. I like to make it a little bit bigger. There we go. That's it. If a student's working by themselves, Kahoot has added um, a feature that I really like. So I put the link to create.kahoot.it because if you click play, and here is that feature that I was talking about. Start a single player game with virtual players. You click practice and the student is able to play Kahoot and assess their learning using 
Kahoot with virtual players along with them. So they just put the type there, nickname in, or a teacher can do the same for them and click OK Go and you are playing Kahoot about the butterfly life cycle. Fun, right? So I'm gonna leave this site. I'm gonna leave Kahoot and I'm gonna escape my slide presentation. I'm gonna keep it in edit mode and that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for listening.